Wide Open Outdoor Adventures with your host, Dave Baltier. We'll make you a better sportsman. Subscribe to the Wide Open Sportsman YouTube channel today. can see rolling into the Eisenhower State Park and we're about to fish Lake Texoma. It's right between Oklahoma and Texas. There's more lake in Oklahoma so we have to have Oklahoma fishing licenses. Rod Bend in action coming your way next two days. All right guys we've been riding in style cutting across Texas the Oklahoma border is right out there in the middle of Lake Texoma. And this has been our cruising rig. Pretty sweet, eh? The Peterbilt and the Bloomer trailer, baby. Tim Teal, my great friend from Tilden, Texas, gets us set up at camp for the night. We fish with John in the morning. Hello guys, Dave Valtier of Wide Open Outdoor Adventures. I'm on Lake Texoma, right here between Oklahoma and Texas, and I'm with John here, and we are gonna catch some striper, at least that's the plan. How's it been? It's been great, man. The top water fishing is excellent. Uh, we're gonna do some, we're gonna catch some of our box fish, which uh, any, our box fish are our fish that are under 20 inches. We're gonna catch some of them on pencil poppers and top waters. And then after we're through doing that, we're gonna get some of our overs, which are fish that are over 20 inches. Those are our bigger fish. Once they start to go down, we'll be fishing for them with uh, these P-Line slabs. These are a great little slab that I get from P-Line. They work really good and they catch a lot of fish. Here comes our sign. That crazy John was just telling me that we're running here right over a good spot where we're going to fish, but he's going to turn and go into the sun and that way he's got a little bit different vantage, a little bit better angle on the water to see these fish coming up and popping on the surface. So top water baits striper bass here Lake Texoma on wide open. We're about to get it on right now. Now what I like to do when I when I toss them out there is I like to uh, walk the dog with them. Okay, I, I can it. I can walk the dog all day long. Yes, all right. Rod bend in action. John is hooked up. A little guy. That's the hardest fish. One hit it. Fish on. Rod bend in action on the wide open. You see it? All right, double. No, not by much. Boy, he wants to wiggle as soon as I get it, get my hand on him. Unless he bleeds. 
these are tiny. If these don't get any better, we're gonna move on. Better fish right there, guys. I can see them. Okay, watch for the blow up. Okay, this is gonna get a lot better. These fish are gonna be bigger than this. Right here. Yeah, there's real there's a lot of nervous water right there. Okay, here's that whole the spot there is fixing to erupt. I'm casting way into there. Oh, I think I'm over Tim. I'm under Tim. If I can catch a fish, I can get that bait out of the way. Catch a throwback. This is bad to the bone. Today on the wide open, it's sight casting for stripers. And they're blowing up on the water. Some people think we're fishing. We're really hunting. Now we'll just leave this thing out. I need to get to it pretty regular. This is a boat rodeo. There we go. Somebody else, outdoor show. Okay, Fred, I'm coming up. Yeah, keep me uh, keep me in mind all day when you find some fish that are out there working. Okay, Fred. See, some of those splashes are a little bit better. Dang, here we go. Fish on. I can't believe I went all the way through that and didn't get nothing. That will be a good one to eat. That's a good eater size. Well, this is a better fish. Get him, John. There we go. There we go. Yeah, we have to use a net on this bad boy. There we go. Now that's what we came for. All right, guys, as you can see, we got a triple right here. The water is just blowing up like crazy. Over here, Lake Texoma. Whoop. Even that fish wanted to get back. John said, <laughs> nope. All right, let's get some more. Fish on, wide open style. This fixing is a better be another, fish. Fixing to be another triple. Look at this school right here. You getting that rod? This is a, this is a big fish, big fish. You get did you get one of them overs? I got an over. Good. If I don't catch everybody's lines, he's just taking line. That's good. Yeah. You're okay. I'm gonna come. Uh oh. Coming over you. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Good now. Right. Oh, this is a strong fish. Get, are you getting the rod bent on, Ben? Woo! Now that's why I fish. Let me know when you get some color. I'll get that's my is, gas This is bigger out. than John's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is rod bending. Look at this fish. Look at this fish in the water. All right, I guess I'll go ahead and get a net. This is bigger than John. Look at this fish in the water, brother. Nice one. Perfect. Look at that. All right. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> That's why I fish. Well, these fish have got such a dorsal plate right here. That's why I wear these gloves. And also the, the sharpest part of them is right here in the gill plate. This is like a little razor blade right here. So you gotta be very careful when you handle them. That's why I always wear a glove. There you go. They're gonna get bigger. Once they start going one direction, that's pretty much what they'll do. And I'm gonna use the side view imaging to kind of try to find them. Even, even though they'll be down a little bit, they'll, they'll keep popping back up here and there. Once I really start getting into these groups of fish, if you'll notice right here, see how all this right, right here starts to turn real white? That means we've got a lot of fish in that area. That's seeing out 250 feet to each side. So far on the wide open, we've been using the Cordell pencil popper, and we're gonna change up to a jig, at least what I call them. 
Tell us what we're doing here, John. Well, we're, these fish are starting to go down now, so we're going to switch it up. We're going to start trying to find these fish with our side view imaging. It's shooting 250 feet to each side of the boat. We're going to be using a P-line sassing jig. This is in a two ounce. Sometimes I'll use a bigger one in a three ounce, but right now the baits are still kind of, kind of small that they're eating, so this is what we're going with. Um, these things work really, really well catch a lot of fish most of the year on the, this kind of bait right here. So this is going to be the bait of choice for the deeper fish and hopefully the bigger fish. And this is my selection for slab for a couple different reasons. It's got a swivel that's built right into it. It's got a really tough finish and it's got a welded split ring so your like your braided lines and stuff can't get inside the split rings. Okay, I'm slab fishing now, and what I like to do when I slab fish is I'll keep two hands on this rod right here, and I'll keep my thumb in the ready. If something was to hit that bait as it was going down, I would push my thumb real hard against the spool and set the hook. Then once I get down to the bottom here, it's about 60 feet deep. So I'm going to go about 30 turns when I bring this bait back up to the top. There's quite a few, but I don't know that I'm right in the middle of them yet. I'm going five turns at a time until I get to 30 turns. But just about as fast as you can go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is like, it's a reaction bite that is what you're going for here. There you go. Yeah, like that. There's one. This feels like just a good box fish here. <laughs> so let it go all the way down to the bottom and then I want you to come up 30 turns. I don't want you to come out of the water because a lot of times these fish are actually going to follow your bait to the top. Okay, so, so like I'm feeling this bait when it's going down to the bottom. I'm in about 60 feet of water here. So I'm going to do about five turns at a time until I get to 30 turns as fast as I can turn and then a pause. That way it keeps the bait in the water so if there's a fish chasing it to the top, he'll chase it up and as soon as it starts to drop back down then he'll hit it. Like right now I'm just really kind of slow cruising through here so I can use my side view imaging. There's a few fish in here, you can see them there, but when I really get over top of a good school that thing should really light up. Technology's changed fishing big time. It has really changed. I mean, being able to see it 250 feet to each side of your boat is a, is a huge advantage, and I, I don't know how I lived without it before. Oh, we're fixing to be all over them here, guys. They are really under as thick. There we that go. That fish got some shoulders. There you go. There's what you're looking for. I ain't making any headway with this fish. He's just pulling. Oh, yeah. Just waiting on him to stall out here for me. He's still pulling line. I'm going to back off that just Tim a little dropped bit. off a fish, too. That sucker's pulling pretty good. Here we go. Oh, now, a little later in the fall. Oh, this is side hook. That's what's up. A little later in the fall, You'll get some, that's why he feels so big. Mm, well, hell, anybody can catch him in the mouth. This one got snagged. Still a pretty good fish. Just not as big as what I thought he was. I tell you what, man, it's on fire out here on Lake Texoma. You can catch striped bass like we are today, largemouth bass, white bass, and the common carp. Since December of 2018, almost 500,000 striper bass have been caught in this lake. Lake Texoma is actually between the Oklahoma and Texas border. In fact, the border is in center, not really the center of the lake, but it cuts through the lake. And this lake was formed by the Denison Dam on the Red River. There you the go. reservoir project was completed in 1944, so this lake is an old lake. And over seven, about six million visitors come to this magnificent lake each year. Too cool. Rod Bend in action, Captain John. That'd be a pretty good one. Just a good box fish, I think. Yeah, oh yeah. You 
get that one with top water. I see a pretty good mess of them right there. The bottom, Under, see five, that nervous water right behind five, us here? Five, 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 five. So right here, I'm in 50 feet of water, so you're gonna wanna go 25 turns. Look at that, that's a little one. Look, they're getting smaller. Hey, one, of these, one of these three fish is gonna keep. They're getting smaller. <laughs> the fish is trying to buy the bait that's about the same that's size the same as it is. <laughs> 20 turns up, okay guys? 20 turns up and then go back down. Really got a lot of fish here. Mmm, missing. They'll take it on the way down sometimes, huh, John? Most of the time, I would say about 80% of the time is when they're gonna hit, they're gonna hit this bait when it's on the fall. And you just have to be ready. I, I, I kind of tell people, you're just kind of like a mousetrap ready to go off. If something was to touch that bait when it's going down, you wanna push your thumb real hard against the spool and set the hook. But What's really happening with these striper early in the morning, they were working this area where all the boats were, but they're actually making a run. They're in a feeding frenzy and they're moving. So they're actually almost a mile over here now. We've been working some different areas here. Now we're gonna follow them this way, wide open style. Special thanks to our amazing sponsors. We couldn't do what we do without them. Just get out there. Visit WideOpenSportsman.com every day for your daily fix of adrenaline. You know, it's always wide open.